too difficult. Hmm. Now we've got two washers. Put your way. Next thing is to look at the Woodruff key, see if it's damaged. Ah, uh, no. Right, they came off pretty well. Um, Woodruff keys look good, axles look good. Um, the other thing is, someone's been in here before, got lots of copper grease around here, um, plenty of pad on each of these. Uh, yeah, so the next step is to take these backing plates off. Um, I've undone the lower bolts already because the arms bolted to them. Um, top one's still got split pins in, so sprayed in with penetrating fluid but the next challenge will be to get these pins out and uh, then in theory this should just come off. Well the two split pins over there were dead easy and the ones this side have been a complete pain. They're actually thicker. Um, there's all sorts of ways to get these things out but um, yeah I mean if you can push it out a little bit can level up the ends, push it out a little bit, you can sometimes grab it with some grips, hit the grips with a hammer and it'll pull it out. I mean the other way is to snap them off flush, which is what I've done here. Um, I use a sharpened screwdriver, I got a really small screwdriver like a chisel, and sort of went in that way and cut them off flush. And I'm actually able to get these out with a punch, you know you can see it's coming, it's coming out. Probably get the punch stuck now, that'll be the next thing, but it is, it is coming out. I can probably pull that out now with grips. Um, main thing really is take it easy and don't actually give up, and eventually they'll come out. I mean, the other thing I could have tried having cut it off flush would be to drill it out. Um, yeah, but this is working so far. Right, I've got one left to go. I got that one out with the punch. Um, don't know where the fragments went. Uh, this one is being a real pain, so I've got a small screwdriver about 3mm across at the end, 4mm, sharpened it, hammered it in that way to cut off the ends above and below. Because there is a high risk strategy method which is where you just undo the nut and hope that it slices off the ends of the split pin. Which might work if the pin's made of soft metal, these do seem quite soft so to increase my chances of not ruining the threads, I cut them off flush by going in that way with the equivalent of a chisel. Um, and now I'm going to risk gently turning the nut. It starts to turn, it should cut its own thread out, and then I can drill or hammer out the remaining fragments of a uh, split pin, hopefully. So let's see how we get on. Nothing really bad is going on here. Fingers crossed, I haven't ruined it. Yeah, well, okay, right, you can put more grips on the back. Yeah.
this is the difference between uh, YouTube videos and reality although this is a YouTube video I managed to loosen most of these using the uh, 9 16 spanner um, on this side whether they've been taken off more than once in the past or something they all seem a bit smaller and I'm just rounding them off so the only solution I've found to that is to hammer on and I mean hammer on a 13 millimeter socket which is a tiny bit smaller and hit it and it turns and then to get it off I use this beat up old screwdriver but it's metal all the way through to the end I put it on like that hit it like crazy and then the spanner will fly off and then I move on to the next one so what should just take a few minutes is actually going to take me an hour or so but I'll get them off in the end and then these bolts have to be replaced why did I do that you might ask well the only one I couldn't undo I've done all the others is that one because I can't hammer the socket on because this was in the way it's the only way I can get any purchase with my hammer because these are welded on just to cut that off and when I rebuild the whole thing I'll weld it back on again wheel socket on so just can't get the ring spanner on let's take this very slowly indeed Yes. Oh. Well, that was fun. <coughs> well, that was a laugh and a half, wasn't it? Managed not to crack everything. Oh, that. There we go. So I don't know if I've ruined a socket and ruined a spanner, but you know, needs must. Right. Now. According to the books and the videos, all I've got to do, this is the passenger side, it's the American passenger side, in the UK it's the driver's side, anyway, that side, yeah, we undo these ring of bolts and this whole tube, axle, crown wheel, spider gears and the other axle will all just slide out. Ah, this is in the way. Right, so when I've turned it around to face this way, it will all just slide out with no trouble whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, let's see if that's true. Right, something tells me this axle has been apart in the past. And the reason I know that, I don't know if you can see. See these two marks? One, two, one, two. That's to line this back up when you put it back together again you're meant to mark it and you're meant to put one each side now I can't see anything this side but I didn't do that and the fact you didn't do that I don't think they may have done so that's how you know to get it back on in the same place so these are in the right place and everything so that might be promising right so here we go all I've got to do is uh, pop this off and then the whole axle diff and everything will slide out yeah. right, let's see if it's loose that's the first thing no not really have I left any bolts in no definitely not hmm. oh there it goes oh something's happening right will it slide out uh. hmm. Short 
going on here? Oh, hang on. What am I doing? It's got to go out that way. This crown wheel's this side. Hmm. It's not upside down, is it? No. There's some kind of circle up or something that I'm not seeing. Let's put this back for now. Let's cut it on this end. Oh yeah, here it goes. Whatever it is, it's moving. Ah, there we are. Just need a gentle persuasion. Oh. Oh my, my. Ooh, this is the echo. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, look. That bearing looks pretty good. Um, crown wheel's the other side of the pinion. So I need to take that side off and slide it all out that way. Which would then leave us with the banjo. Fair enough. Oh, this kind of crud is in here, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't look too bad though. What is this stuff? Paint? Goodness knows. Bits of, oh, maybe bits of this ceiling stuff that have dropped down. See how it's flaking off? Right. I've put it on the floor, so if something falls off, this is just too dangerous like this. I want it to be already on the floor, if you know what I mean. So, now in theory, if I put on the case, bind with these bolts, lift this up, the case should come off this way, leaving this tube on the whole axle structure. So let's see if that works. Yeah, well that's what's supposed to happen. on here but I wouldn't say it's usually worn. Mm, these bones don't look too bad. Because this was in a museum um, you don't know what mileage it's done before it went in the museum. It's probably in reasonable condition when it went in the museum. Who knows? Maybe it's low mileage. Anybody's guess. Anyway I'm going to change this and I'm going to change that uh, pinion gear and the shaft that goes in um, and then there's fun and games setting it back up again. Um, these have all got, I thought people put lock wire through these but if you notice they've all got very neatly done split pins. I suppose that's fair enough. There's also one more clue that this has been messed with before. Right, and if you can see there, there's three little punch marks and the matching three there. So that would suggest that this spider gear has been a part as well. Which is kind of good, I assume. 